Hello one and all, I am your host RM Punk and this is the Punk Wrestling Podcast Smackdown Review Edition. But before we get into the review, hit that like button, press that subscribe for me, check out my other links in the description. I will be hosting my live reactions to Fastlane on Sunday night at twitch.tv slash punk wrestling podcast. I'd love to see some of you there. Say hello. Follow me there and we'll get to it, shall we? And we'll have a good time. So, Smackdown, what did I think? It was an all right show. It was a go-home show of, you know, it was it was your standard go-home show. Uh, but I do feel more hyped coming out of it for Fast Lane than I was going into it. And that is always the goal. So, no real complaints there. So, we'll get started, shall we? It started off with Sasha and Banky, Bianca arguing. Uh, they are in Gorilla and they're arguing still about Reggie, to be honest. And Belair says that she won't be coming to save Sasha. And Sasha says she didn't ask her to. Um, Reggie is on a spa day, ladies and gentlemen. Naya is taking him on a spa day. So we will not have any Reginald this week. Uh, but yeah, it is Sasha versus Naya Jax for the title to start the show. They start off with some jaw jacking. Sasha takes a, the early offence in and takes the opportunity to give a quick baseball drop kick to Shayna, who is watching from ringside. Uh, but Nia does take over and powers, hits a nice gorilla press slam. Samoan drop gets two. Um, and looks like Nia is dominating here. Belair's music hits and she... Goes and tells Sasha that she's got this and that Sasha has to win this match uh, as we go to break. When we come back, Naya is still in control. Uh, she hits the stretch muffler a couple times. One time swinging her face first in a turnbuckle. That does look gnarly. Um, Bian Banks tries to hit a sunset flip, but Naya is not falling over. Tries to sit on her face, but Sasha dodges. Uh, there's a nice tornado DDT into the bank statement from Banks. Uh, Belair and Shayna are arguing or fighting or something, but they go in the ring. It causes all sorts of distractions. The ref is distracted and Shayna does the soccer kick, uh, but hits Nia inadvertently and Banks gets the pin. Nia is pissed. Uh, it was an alright match. Like There was no real complaints there. Uh, there was a quick interview segment with Edge. Uh, basically, because it's his first match on SmackDown in 10 years. SmackDown is his home. It's got some of his best and worst moments, which we will see some of throughout the show. And he wants to win tonight because he feels Daniel Bryan deserves a fair shake at Fastlane and he needs to be there for that to happen. Uh -huh. uh, Seth Rollins is out next for a... Well, he will be out. He's out for a quick promo. Um, and he has some very snazzy jackets. But before we get to him actually in the ring... Uh, there's a recap of Edge winning the tag team titles with Hulk Hogan 19 years ago, which sets up the announcement that Hulk Hogan is hosting WrestleMania along with Titus O'Neil. Yes, I know what you're doing here. I'm not falling for it. I still think Hogan's an ass. Uh, Shayna and Nia are arguing as well backstage, and Nia is basically blaming Shayna for what happened and her not winning the titles. And Shayna is going to get, like, He's going to repay the favour, he's going to help her out, and he's going to go get a match with Belair to make up for her mistake. Um, Seth promo now, finally. And it basically is, people may not like him, but they do respect him. All these people came out to see him when he returned. Um, they turned their backs on me. He respected their decision to be idiots. Uh, but Cesaro took disrespect too far. Um, he's embarrassed me, humiliated me, and the reason for that is he's jealous of me and my success, whereas he is an abject failure. Um, Seth says that he's a fighter. Um, when he gets knocked down, he gets back up, unlike Cesaro. Rook Q recap. Um, Seth is joking that Cesaro having to like is having a hard time getting up uh, because of all those years trying to reach for that brass ring. Yeah, I see what you did there too. Um, says that Cesaro swung him 22 times and he's never going to do that again because he's Seth freaking Rollins and you're the biggest waste of potential in WWE. Q Nakamura. We get Nakamura in the most Nakamura way. Um, 
Seth is jail jacking, talk about disrespect, warning Nakamura to not come in the ring. Uh, Nakamura takes the mic and just says, shut up. And then it's a nice kick and Rollins starts to run away. We get the come on and Rollins comes back and he say Kinshasa for his trouble. And we will be having Nakamura versus Seth Rollins at Fastlane, I do believe. Oh, yes, please. We, so we're getting Seth versus Nakamura. That will be great. And it looks like we're going to get Seth versus Zara at WrestleMania, which will also be great. We're in a good time right now. Uh, but next up, we get a bit of tag team action going. We get Street Profits versus the Mysterios with the Dirty Dogs on commentary. This was a short but pretty fun match. In the end, Dom does win with a roll-up and the commentary was blah, 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 blah. Gable and Elvis come out. Gable is on the mic and he's basically saying, you know, don't think that just because you beat Street Profits, you're ahead of us in the queue for the tag team titles. And at one point calls Ray Shorty. Again, so what he did there. Uh, turns attention, they turn attention to the Prophets, so Ray and Dom attack as we go to break. And when we come back from break, we have another tag match. We have Alpha Academy versus the Mysterios this time round. And the Street Prophets join the Dirty Dogs on commentary, so we now have six people on commentary. I know I put a seven up, but you know what I mean. Um, this was another little fun match. Uh, Ray does hit the 619 on Gable early on, but Otis stops all the momentum and he is a monster throughout this match and ends up winning with a massive second rope splash onto Dom. Yeah, nice. Everyone's arguing as we go. So we've got a bit of tag team action here. These may be the only four teams, but at least they're all interacting and probably end up with a multi-man match at Mania, but they're giving the tag team a little bit. Uh, Backstage segment with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens is sort of still unsure about the documentary. Um, keeps asking Zayn, who is they? Who are you talking about? Um, and Zayn invites him to come and watch his match with Corbin at ringside. Um, and if he doesn't see anything fishy, then he will drop the whole conspiracy documentary thing. Yeah, that's going to happen. Uh, we get another recap of Edge. Uh, finest moments. Cash in against Undertaker 14 years ago. To the, not today, but 14 years ago. Uh, we get a Daniel Bryan promo. Um, main event hype here. You know, basically, he knows exactly what will happen if Jay wins. Doesn't know what will happen if Edge, win, Edge wins. Because he does think Edge wants to face Roman at WrestleMania. So he could still screw him. Um, and he thinks that's because Edge thinks he can beat Roman. But... Daniel Bryan knows he can beat Roman and he will make Roman tap out. And Roman comes out and, you know, he's like, I can take your little white lies. You talk about being ambitious and blah, 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 but you can't tap me out. Um, you have a better chance of shooting lightning out your ass or growing wings than tapping me out. I have never tapped out. I'm never going to tap out. Um, it says he'd rather lose an arm than tap out and he'd rather die in the ring than to tap out to a person like you. Very nice stuff here. Um, and Daniel Bryan says, you're lying. All this head of the table stuff, all that. You're delusional. And everyone thinks they're unbeatable until they're beaten. And everyone thinks they're untappable until they have to tap. Um, and he says, I hope you don't die. But whether you tap or don't tap, I'm beating you up. I'm breaking you down. Fast lane. We get a video package for Corbin versus Zane in the match that nobody asked for. No, really, that was in the video package. This was a. They also mentioned that this was the least anticipated match in the history of SmackDown. The irritating force meeting the unlikable object. SmackDown did a funny. This was good. I liked it. It was fun. Uh, we get a Logan Paul reference before the match because everyone loves Logan Paul, don't we? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I know who that is. Honest. Right, uh, Kevin Owens is on commentary for this match because everyone's on commentary in these matches. Um, Cole and Graves want to take the evening off, take it easy, have other people do the work. Uh, anyway, so through this match, Sammy's trying to take shortcuts, trying to cheat, and the ref is not having any of it, seeing all of his attempts. And in the end, he's trying to take the ring turbuckle off. The ref sees him, stops him, and... Hit, Corbin hits the end of days and Zayn loses. Uh, Kevin didn't see any evidence to support Zayn's claims here. Um, and Zayn's in his face. Did you see that? Did you see that? And he's like, yeah, I saw it. Like the ref made good calls. You were cheating. Um, and Zayn walks off and 
Kevin Owens is like talking to the commentary saying, thank you for having me here, da da da. Boom, hell of a kick to a sitting Kevin Owens. And that was a hell of a kick. Uh, knocked his headphones straight off. Um, and he said he thought Kevin was smarter than this. Um, it's a feud we've seen before, but I am down and I'm always down for Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn at WrestleMania. Just give me a good story and I am even more down. Talking of stories I'm down for, the next bit was a sit-down split-screen interview with Big E and Apollo. Uh, Big E uh, says that, that any chance of reconciliation, uh, blah, 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 reconciliation is over. Uh, it's all about vengeance. Uh, it's two days till fast lane, and if I was you, I'd enjoy your last moments of normal function of your limbs. Uh, the future for you is bleak, and I'll retain no question, and you'll get everything you deserve. And... Apollo's turn are what I deserve, what I deserve. Um, I'd be careful with this disrespect to Nigerian royalty. Fill your mouth with a razor and you'll spill blood. I will crack your face and you will see the Nigerian warrior as, as I stand over your mangled body as new Intercontinental Champion. Um, this was good stuff. Very good stuff. Um, he has heard enough at this point and gets on a golf cart and drives around the golf cart looking for Apollo, and Apollo is looking for E, and we have a backstage brawl, ladies and gentlemen. Um, e gets top of this, uh, throwing Apollo around against the walls and such, and Apollo then escapes in a golf cart, but didn't look like the same golf cart. They had two different golf carts. <laughs> so next up, we have Bianca Belair versus Shayna. This was not a match. Um, Sha 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 Sasha comes out. You can tell I've had a few days off. I can't speak. I apologise for this. Sasha comes out. And then leaves and says, now nah, you've got this and walks off. And very early on in the match, Nia also can't be bothered and she also leaves. Um, they've both left. So Natalia and Tamina come out and attack both of them. Neither of their tag team partners come to save them. And Nat Nat Natalia and Tamina stand tall to close the segment. We get the last recap of Edge at SmackDown moments of him retiring 10 years ago. Not the best moment there, but there we go. And we have Edge versus Jey Uso. Daniel Bryan is on commentary for this one. Like I said, there's someone on commentary for every match. Um, early on, Edge is looking for submissions. Um, but the focus of this match would be Edge's injured ribs and Jey's injured shoulder. At one point during this match, Edge hits a top rope hurricane runner. Um, catches the super kick and it hits the education execution. Uh, it does go for a spear, but eats the super kick and a splash. But that only gets him two because of the injured shoulder. It took him a while to pin, and the spear does give Edge the win in the end, and will be the special enforcer at Fastlane. No time to celebrate though. Roman spears Edge, calls Daniel Bryan out to tap him out. Come on, tap me, tap me now. And But before Brian can get in the ring, Jay attacks him and throws him in the ring to hit a spear. And Roman stands tall to close the show. Like I said, this was quite a good episode of SmackDown, but it was a go-home show. There wasn't tons of great matches. But there were some good segments, some good building. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Um, yeah, we got Fastlane Sunday. So I won't be doing my predictions because those videos never do very well but i am looking forward to it um if you catch me on twitch.tv slash punk wrestling podcast i will happily answer any questions about what i think about Fastlane, and i will be live on sunday night for fast lane so have a good one please like share and subscribe i apologize that i'm mumbling my words a lot today i've not been well hence the time off but i felt i needed to come back for this so have a good one and I'll good night.